Welcome to my channel, The Binge Eating Therapist. I'm Sarah, a former binge eater turned psychotherapist, and my mission is to use this platform to bring content to you to help you understand your struggle with food and break free from binge eating. And today I want to talk about discipline and willpower because these two come up a lot in the binge eating world. I don't know how many times I've heard people say that they lack discipline, that they lack willpower, that they wish they had more of it, that they feel like the answer to their problem is to just have more of these two things and then everything would be okay. So I want to have a look at these and perhaps encourage you to think about them a little bit differently and how we might shift our perspective when it comes to these two and use them to our advantage. So let's begin with willpower. And willpower means to exert control in order to do something or restrain impulses. So willpower is a lot about control. And we know that control comes up a lot with binge eating, with trying to control and feeling out of control. So the problem with willpower as a long-term strategy is that it is a finite resource. That means we run out of it. There's a particular part of our brain, the orbitofrontal cortex, which is involved with willpower. And when you are trying to use willpower, um, it's often described as white knuckling. You feel like you're clinging on and your arms are getting tired even though not much is happening because you're just holding so tightly to trying to do something or to try and make yourself not do something. If you make a decision at the, the night before, let's say you say, I'm not gonna eat these foods tomorrow, I'm only gonna eat that. And then you go through the whole day, sort of white knuckling it using willpower. What is probably happening is you're probably making about 25 or 30 decisions that day not to do something or to do something, depending which way around you've done it. So what feels like one decision made the night before, if you're using willpower, you have to keep redeciding over and over again. No, I'm not going to give in. No, I'm not going to do that. And that becomes tiring. And it's why so many people tend to break and binge when it comes to sort of five, six, seven o'clock in the evening onwards. So willpower in that aspect is not a great strategy. It's tiring and then when it breaks, you are tired, you're exhausted, you're disheartened and all the emotions that come along with that could lead to a binge being even worse. And there's a really great quote about willpower by someone called Kelly McGonigal. She wrote a book called The Willpower Instinct. Um, and in this book, she says that you don't need willpower unless there is a conflict of will. And my goodness, that is so true. And binge eating is a conflict. There's part of you that wants to do this, there's part of you that wants to do that, and they're kind of in opposition with each other. And there are so many parts of perhaps your struggle with binge eating that lead to your conflict. For a lot of people, there's a weight conflict. For a lot of people, there are so many ideas about how they should and shouldn't be eating. The black and white thinking comes into here, you know, the black versus the white. The two are always in conflict. We need to merge them together and bring the shades of grey. And so people who recover from binge eating, they're not using willpower. They've just found a way to resolve their conflict when it comes to binge eating. People, you can't recover through willpower because willpower is a, she's a fickle beast, you know, she comes and goes and she gets tired and um, can't be relied upon. And so many people then end up beating themselves up for not being able to do something. But the reason or the way that they're trying to do it is they're trying to use willpower, which just doesn't work. So next, let's have a look at discipline. So discipline is often about training yourself to obey the rules. It's often linked with punishment um, and a lot of negative connotation around that. But if we just strip it down in this aspect and look at self-discipline, as being self-control. Again, it's that control word again, the C word, which I don't know is always helpful, but that idea that we have some sense of self-control means that we can feel like we trust ourselves a little bit more. And so I read a lovely quote the other day by a guy called Charles Eisenstein, and he said that true discipline is really self-remembering. Now, it took me a moment or two to understand what that really meant, but the more I've been thinking about it, the more I really, really love this. 
as an idea of discipline when it comes to doing the things that we feel like we ought to be doing. I use that word a little bit lightly because if you're trying to do something, firstly, I think the first question you need to ask yourself is, is this for your higher good? So if you're saying to yourself, right, tomorrow I'm only going to eat a salad, is that for your higher good? What are your reasons for that? Chances are it's a form of self-punishment, it's a form of making something up for yourself, it might be a form of what you feel like you should be doing. But if it was really coming from a place of self-care, that might have a different energy around it, but I don't think there are many circumstances where that would be the case. So firstly, when it comes to trying to do something about this, whatever it is that you're trying to do, is it for your higher good? Because if it isn't, you're always going to ignite that conflict of will and you're going to need to try and figure it out using willpower. So you'll just bounce from one to the other. So what you might often see as discipline in other people, let's say you know someone who gets up at the same time every day and they meditate and they do yoga, they do this, that and the other. And you think to yourself, oh, they're so disciplined. I'd love to be like that. I think when it gets to a certain point, it's just becomes part of your identity. This is what they do every morning. It's become a habit at this point. And so they don't forget themselves. They always remember, they wake up and they think, okay, I've woken up and this is what I do. And they go through their motions. And for whatever reason, they found that that morning routine works for them. So let's say that you wanted to set an intention not to scroll through your phone while you were eating. Okay, well, let's look at what your motivations might be. And your motivations might be, Yes, uh, well, when I scroll through my phone, when I eat, I end up feeling dissatisfied afterwards. I'm more likely to binge. It's associated with binging. And if I'm not scrolling through my phone, then I'm being really present with my food and then hopefully I can enjoy it more. Great, those intentions are wonderful. So you go in and you think, right, this is what I'm gonna do. No more phone time when I'm eating. And maybe you do it for a day and by the second day, you're kind of like, I'll just check Facebook while I'm eating this. I'll just do this, I'll just do that. And then later on you think, oh, dang it, I didn't do what I said I was going to do. I can't do this. I'm so undisciplined. I've got no willpower, blah, blah, blah. Tumbles out and you sort of just discard it and throw away the whole idea. If we think of discipline as self-remembering, what happened was that you forgot yourself. You forgot that this was what you wanted to do for you and the reasons why. So that idea of self-discipline as being self-remembering is just remembering why you're trying to do something. Because quite often, when old habits are calling us, we forget what it is that we're trying to do. We forget ourselves. And that's where we lose control of ourselves. Now perhaps, perhaps we always will forget ourselves. Perhaps it's kind of human nature to some degree to get lost in things around us and get drawn in by this distraction and that distraction. But then when we do remember, what often happens is people start beating themselves up for not doing what it was they said they were going to do, rather than remembering and going, oh, thank goodness, I've remembered myself again. And then you reset the intention. So you might have gone a day without being on your phone when you were eating, and then a couple of days where you weren't, and then you remember again. That's an opportunity to go, okay, I've remembered. <laughs> I've remembered myself. I've remembered why I'm doing this. Let's just try again. And that, I think, is what recovery often looks like, is that we keep forgetting ourselves, we keep forgetting the intentions that we're making, and then we get pulled into a vortex of binge eating. And then when we remember ourselves, we can keep bringing ourselves back. And the more we keep bringing ourselves back, the further and further that part of us that binge eats becomes. And like I'll talk about identity a lot in these videos as well, I think. When you start practicing new ways of being and, and thinking and shifting your perspective that starts to become just integrated into who you are. So one day you just become somebody who doesn't binge eat anymore. You might think about it, you might be tempted by it even, but part of you remembers that's just not me. I'm remembering myself in this moment. But that can only happen when we're prioritizing our higher good. When we're at war with our body and we're trying to morph them into a certain shape, we're going to keep reigniting that conflict. 
So we're going to keep reaching for willpower because there's this conflict of will. So we need this willpower and we'll keep using up our willpower, burning out, giving in, going down the tunnel, like replenishing our resources, using willpower again, burning out. And that becomes part of the cycle as well. And then we'll beat ourselves up because we're just not disciplined people. We don't identify as people who can be self-disciplined. Because self-discipline, again, even when I say the words now, I still have that kind of negative connotation with this idea of discipline. So maybe rather than being self-disciplined, we need to just become self-remembering. So that's what I'll leave you with today. Any thoughts? Please comment below. Please like the video and I'll see you on the next one. Go well. Namaste.